So I always have a certain, um, you know, anxiety, trembly quality at the beginning or leading up to events like this. And, and it was a little more acute this time. Um, and then I found out when I got on my computer about an hour ago that my camera wasn't working. So I think, I think some part of me knew that this was gonna be a little, uh, a little more stressful. So JT has worked with me, I'm working off my iPad. Um, I can't really see all of you at the same time, but I know you're out there. I know there are old friends. I know there are new friends and um, I feel you. So we're adjusting. And um, I also do feel that that heaven principle, since we're gonna be talking about these for the next hour or so, the heaven principle of that uncertainty, that uh, trembling quality shifts, and I can feel it shifting now that now we're, we're connecting, we're, I'm, I'm engaged. And so I'm in the earth moving place now and mm -hmm. then whatever insight arises that will that'll be our human um quality at the end so just the landscape of the of our time is that i'm going to talk a little bit and then i'm going to do some brushwork here and i have my iphone camera so when i'm getting ready to do that i want to make sure everybody has that sort of central i think jt will set that up and then we're going to be looking at my some sketchbook pages illustrated journaling pages and then at the end what i'd like to do is do some spontaneous three-line poetry and hopefully create something together at the very end so that's the that's the one two three of this time So yes, I was, you could say, marked by my, the intersection of my life with Choigyam Trungpa in the 70s and 80s. And that I came to this, this Shambhala community, the Vajradhatu community at that time, as a Western calligrapher in love with the alphabet, which I still am. I've got it at my back here. And I also have some Chinese pictograms, Chinese characters here and different letter forms supporting me. But at that time I was very oriented uh, to the broad edged pen and the alphabet. And yet I was captivated by Asian calligraphy not that I would become an Asian calligrapher because you, I really believe you, you live and express in the, in the alphabet that you were born into. That's what feels right for me. But I love the way Asian calligraphers spoke about the experience. There was a depth and understanding of what what was going on in the making of a mark? What was joining in that moment? And it's also interesting that down through history, religious organizations, religious traditions have always had a calligraphic element. So I joined, was drawn towards Choyam Trungpa and his artistic nature and didn't even realize that he had a whole calligraphic tradition that he was bringing from Tibet, also a broad edged element, wooden tools. And in the process of traveling to the West, he had begun to work with Japanese brushes. 
I had been working with broad edged pens and with a lot of precision. And there was something in me that wanted to work looser. So that was one marking. And the other was the way he spoke about the principles of heaven, earth, and human, the way he brought these ancient principles of really our orientation on this planet, how he brought it and spoke it in a way that was fresh, could, could translate, could come into this culture. So during those years, I was um, just absorbing and um, after he died, I, I began to work with brushes more and feeling the kind of immediacy and sensitivity of that tool, still with my own alphabet. And then I began to be asked to create calligraphic experiences for large groups of people. So there's a very slow path in calligraphy of copying characters. And I was gonna do, give people the fast path of how do you show up in making a mark? And what does that tell you about yourself? It's like immediate feedback. They, there's a Chinese saying that calligraphy is a picture of the mind. So, how do you read it? So I realized that in creating some of these large calligraphic sessions in conferences, I needed some structure. If we didn't have the bones of a character, a Chinese character that we were going to do, or a letter form, what was going to be the bones? What was the inherent what was going to give it integrity? And I sensed that what I had taken in with these teachings of heaven, earth, and human could be our structure. Chogun Trungpa had spoken about these principles in an outer way, how things are arranged on the page, in an inner way, how you feel at each stage of an action how you feel at the beginning, how you feel in the center of it, and how you feel at the end. And then he spoke about the, he called it the secret quality of it, or maybe the most intimate. So this is what in my big brush practice held us. That sense of being held is very, um, core, I feel, to all of our lives. And for me, this allowed a holding within expression. So I am going to offer three brush strokes here to give you a sense of what this process is. The, um, you could say that the inner quality of this is that the heaven principle is um, approaching this act with uncertainty and um, not knowing, like something's going to happen, but he even called it like a kind of positive bewilderment. And it's the blank page. So just to allow oneself at the start of anything to have that kind of a trembly quality. And I see it as a kind of gathering of energy. And then when you land on the page, you're in the earth aspect and you're in contact. You're engaged. I call it getting on the page of your life. And then when you lift off, so you're connected there. 
this is like ancient stuff, you know, like the connection of ancient people putting their hands on the cave wall and leaving something behind. You know, it's making contact and leaving some mark behind. And then the, the third aspect is the human and it's how you feel about what you did. Like, curious? Not sure, interested, just all the range of ways that we respond to what just happened. So we move through that and um, use that in each stroke. And then in the outer aspect, how we arrange on the page, I see it as sort of a spontaneous graphic design that I, I tell people to don't have a plan before you start, but in this practice anyway, it's fine to have plans, but to not have a plan and to just let something come to you. It's like the world and you are going to meet here on the page. So I'm going to start out with the most classic, you could say, example. So has everybody seen my, my page here? Okay, good. So the most classic example of you could say heaven, earth, and human is a vertical line coming down towards the body, heaven. Breaking the surface of the water. Then counterbalancing earth, ancient mark, vertical, horizontal, in conversation, in dialogue. And then because this is where we are, this is our relationship, other beings have other relationships to this, but one small mark of human. Where does that want to be? So that's the classic form. And all of you that have been to my big brush workshops know that we work with big brushes and big sheets of paper. So we're working distilled now and yet any kind of true practice can become quite large and quite small. And in fact, it's really interesting to move back and forth between the two. So now I'm going to make one stroke that moves through all three, staying on the page. So the first stroke was heaven landing and kind of come back to the top there. Paused and then I felt that grounding, grounding, grounding. And then how I lifted off the shape that happened in releasing was the human. So Trungpa Rinpoche spoke about that inner quality of these three, the outer, how we work with positive and negative space in the moment. We're really creating a character right then, something that we're going to read. 
And then he spoke about the most personal quality of it was that heaven is a basically good situation happening. This is not aggressive. We're just letting something come down and meet us. So that sense of blessings and kind of a naturally sacred situation, ordinary and sacred. The world and ourselves manifesting. And then the deepest sense of earth is, he said, freedom from laziness and relaxation. So these are the qualities that can get developed as we make a mark. Sort of a natural exertion and we just let gravity, we relax into the ground. And then the deepest sense of human is freedom from subconscious gossip. So having a gap from that commentary and no regrets. So whatever happened in that moment was what was supposed to happen. So I'm gonna do one more and this is going to be a heaven and an earth stroke together. And then I'm gonna do the human in red. So before we move on, let's just hear from maybe two or three people as to anything you noticed in watching this. Anything that came up, a feeling, um, an observation, a question? Anyone? You'll just have to either, JT will have to call on you because I can't see the whole group. Barbara, it's Dennis Douglas. Uh, I just wanted to say the quality you've exhibited in other workshops and here too is this ease and lack of self-critique to allow the energy to flow through your stroke. Uh, it'd be lovely to hear more about that as you go along. You probably will anyway. Thank you, Dennis. Beautiful. Yes. Yeah, we're cultivating that. This is what this is the inner muscle of that this can strengthen in us. Yeah. From Joanna. Oh, that just went off again. Can you read that, JT? Sure. Uh, Joanna says uh, she noticed noticed the breath, holding breath versus sighing and relaxing at the end of the stroke. Yeah. And uh, Lori says the lift off, something I don't see in other practices. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. I noticed, you know, in my big brush workshops, I do a lot, we do a lot of bowing, bowing at the beginning, bowing at the end. But here at this scale, I'm doing a lot of breathing. So you're picking up on that. And yeah, the liftoff is, it's like a bird taking off. It's a, it's, it's, it's landing, it's moving, and then releasing. And that liftoff can have so many different, can leave so many different qualities behind. So that's why it's fun to see that as kind of the human aspect of it. How we Barbara? Can... Yes. Um, Leslie. Leslie. <laughs> um, I just feel that the whole process, I was drawn 
to come because of the need to feel the grounding and the human and where I can, what I can gather. And I feel that this whole energy just creates and forms and helps you receive and 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 keep you or create you and keep you um soul <laughs> together yeah. yeah thank you leslie yeah. ah this human is so lively eloise yeah well i did um i did send when i wrote to my local list i said uh what a time to be offering this. What a wild time to be offering this. And this is the ground, this is the most grounding practice I know. Mm. So I, and I really felt it today moving towards this. We're, we're building our stability during, for these times to be able to hold steady and be open, you know, mm. not, not shut down. So thank you for naming that, Leslie, yeah. Uh, Barbara, this is Susan. Uh, it, it feels like a, um, it felt very like capturing the present in a, in a way that I am surprised to experience on a Zoom call. Mm. <laughs> this is a, this is Zoom magic here. Yeah. Very yeah. And I also wanna say that this is a practice that I do often first thing every day is I just see what's the stroke of this day. And so it's something I offer as something you could do with whatever tools you have. And I'm also glad to hear that you just felt it, it transmits, it does. Definitely. It's, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's all. Hi, Barbara. Good. Yes, yes, Sharaba. Hello, friend. Hi. Uh, I want to say, like, to see the, how the moment started with a little bit of anxious, and when you allowed it, and how the human appeared with joy is amazing. In just a few minutes, how the allowing and like grounding is like so amazing. Yeah. I love that. Uh, Eloise saying the human is lively. You saying the human has an element of joy in it. This is where we're calling this and poignancy in everything, you know, it can have so much, but that's beautiful naming of that. Yeah. Thank you. Good to see you. So what I'd like to do is move on now to talk about the illustrated journaling that has been very much in parallel in my life to this brushwork and in the drawing classes that I've done, um, which some of you have been part of, it's um, when Irene Woodard asked me to do this uh, for Touching the Earth, it was like, right, how do I work with looking at the natural world and recording it. And in the same way that the brush is, the brushwork is joining something, this illustrated journaling is joining some experience for me, like the contemplative qualities that I find out where I am by going through this process. So, so it felt really good to um, bring this, this three-part journaling into and, and show it to all of you, because I do feel that um, it's another way to ground. So JT, if you could bring up the first, uh, the first image. Okay. So where we start in a true nature drawing illustrated journaling workshop is we start with blind contour. 
And that means that levels the playing field for everybody. It's impossible to do an accurate drawing if you're not looking at the page. And that's the blind part. You're not looking at the page, you're only looking at the thing itself, which means you can't get your bearings. You are lost, you could say. You're out in the woods, just sensing and being with the object that you're drawing. So this again, uh, builds a capacity to stay in a place of not knowing. And that is where the alive line lives. That when you're drawing and you're drawing something and you're spending more time looking at your page, you could do an accurate drawing, but it won't have what we're trying to keep the alive line there. So here is the first thing we do, which is uh, we do a blind contour, three views of the wild landscape of our non-dominant hand, my left hand. So three different poses. And as you can see, there are fingers there and there are knuckles and there's great crevices and pinnacles and canyons and one after another just overlapping. And so we go through this process one by one, taking little peaks just to get our bearings. But it's a very interesting experience of being willing to not have to say, how's it looking? It's, it's, it's hard to do, <laughs> we, we wanna look. So um, it's again, building some capacity to be out in the unknown and and, and that's where the breathing line lives. So beautiful drawings come of this. Um, and then I ask each person to write three things on their page. So I've always, since I was really little, put words on, I combined words with my drawings. I don't know, it went way back. Something about word and image. And so I find that after you're in the drawing experience, which is that sensing open mind following, by writing something down, it reveals where you are in a different way. So here are the three things. I ask everyone to write what it is, just the observation, just the fact somewhere in the upper left corner. Three views, left hand. Then somewhere in the middle, layered over, and I actually use the word layered, entangled, layered, all mixed together. So that middle phrase is about describing its nature, describing its texture, Describing the patterns. So it's very um, adjectives there. And then, because you've been through those two, you're ready for the third. And the third is somewhere on the right, and it's something that is an image, a detail, something, a feeling, um, something intimate. And so here I got up there and suddenly I just felt I was out on a hillside, on the hill here, a clear, wide, simple view. What I find is the third thing that one writes is almost always a description of oneself in this moment. So that's where we begin. We're warmed up now. So let's look at the next one, JT. So here, similar thing, it's nice to add a little color. So it's fun to just, as I did in the last one, do the writing in red. Here it's just a natural object that we choose that we wanna spend some time with. And in this case, it's just one long blind contour all the way across the page. And I wrote dried lemon verbena stalk. That's the observation. Twisted, fluted, whorled, contracted. 
turning within. So you could be describing the plant. It's dried, it's closing. Or maybe I was describing myself right then. Okay, so next one. So another way to add color. Can you bring that up just, I'm, I'm um, seeing, I wonder if there's some writing on the bottom that I can't, no, I think I've got it. Okay, that's fine. Um, we like color and I love working with pencil. I, you know, I think it gives uh, the thick and the thin and the breathing quality and the sliding and, um, but then to add a little color on the page just perks it up. So again, you can do it with the writing or in this case, I just dropped in a little bit of color on the berries. And you always wanna watch out that when you start to add color, you don't get into, oh, I'm just gonna fill in the spaces. You just leave a little white space every so often. It's just a touch. So this was a juniper branch, juniper branch with berries nestled in, following the spines clustered and reaching. Now remembering in the slow looking that dad died on this day 12 years ago darkening sky, sad space. So we're working with that quality of the simple fact, the descriptive nature, and then the feeling that the marking that arose just in the time that I'd spent drawing. If anything comes up, you know, questions as I go along, I get excited as I'm talking about these and I'd be glad to, to pause, but let's just move to the next one. We're sort of moving along. Oh yeah, good. So this one um, is one object that I started out in colored pencil and then kind of felt that it was too light, although I like having the color in there. And then as I kept going and kept going, it was almost like I got my, got my feeling of it. So it, it had a kind of um, developmental quality of this pumpkin, the great big pumpkin squash that I have been afraid to draw. I don't know what that was all about, but there often is for me a fear of, can I meet this? Can I... <laughs> Can, am I up to this? You know, it was just had such a beauty and a strength to it. So just naming that. I sit with it, my eyes touching, caressing the bold swelling shapes in and out, deep crevices, wide. There's one more line, JT, that I wrote there. Wide, bright hillsides. That's nice. A long moment of connecting, feeling the body of the world and my life so full, so intact. So you see how what the writing does, it's something got bigger. It like started with naming some fear and then it just became hillsides and then something intact emerged at the end. One object, three views. Okay, next one. Okay, so this is a vertical, um, just pencil. But I wanted to uh, show it because uh, although I often work with natural objects or the natural world or the view out my window or where I'm sitting, this was all in my studio. And, you know, I've done this practice in elementary school gymnasiums, you know, it's like, you can do it anywhere. Um, it's outdoors, indoors, in your house. It's all kind of getting information of what's going on. So I started here with these amaryllis that were just emerging. And then it must have been a 
kind of disheveled day in my studio. So I drew the earth quality was all these papers. And then I landed on these binoculars on the windowsill. And you see that I'm, I have some arrows to sort of direct you as to how to move through this, because it's important that where you start, where you go next, and then that you come to that third one, third. So amaryllis reaching, ascending, transforming with pure intention. Below, piles of papers disheveled out of alignment, out of date phone books and maps. <laughs> Must have been a messy moment in my studio. But it felt kind of, it was so, the emeralds was so pure and then it was just, ah, there's all this. It's the counterbalancing of earth. It's good. <laughs> it gave me some ground. But then those binoculars at the window, this is a little anthropomorphizing, it's okay. At the window, waiting to see clear and far and close. So using arrows or numbering, if you've got your things in places where you feel a viewer, because you want to be able to show this to people sometimes, they might not know, you might go one, two, three, or just guide them with some arrows. Okay, so next one. All right, a few from my sketchbook. Sometimes I just work on sheets of paper. I have these sketchbooks that open really beautifully, so, but I have a strong element in the middle there. So I took one oak leaf and I did three views of it. So you don't know where you're gonna end up. All you do is start out with that sort of, here's the big picture. It's an old oak leaf. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and it's vertical. So it has that heaven principle or something coming down, it's hanging from the sky. And then, I turned it around and that, you know, just like that, that brush stroke that had the vertical and then had the horizontal, here's the same leaf, but on its side, kind of, I say, hanging down, open like a bowl to the sky. And then the third, a little detail on the oak leaf, now coming in close, decay like lace work becoming space. So noting the use of color, just a little bit on the first one, not that much. I don't think I did anything on the second. And then I zeroed in on that little detail. So it's giving me some kind of intimate view that is how something that has form is just being eaten, nibbled on and becoming um, lace work. So this is a combination. I wouldn't say it's pure blind contour, but I am, I'm hanging out as far as, as long as I can before I check back. So I go out to the edge of the leaf and come back and then maybe I'll check, but I'm trying to stay out and answer your question, is this all blind contour? I'm trying to stay out as much as I can. That's the key is, because um, that's where, that's where the aliveness is. And so we're balancing back and forth, kind of this light touch of, I'm going out, okay, I'll check back for a minute, but I don't wanna check back for too long. I'll head out again. Okay, let's do another one. Another sketchbook page out my back door in my backyard, have a big bowl of a yard here. I drew the conifer slender tall conifer that was my heaven then my earth aqueduct wall ruin old stonework there placing the writing just on the edge and then waiting you know i'll do all three drawings first and then i'll write 
the three things. So that's just the way it works for me. I just, it's like I get three kind of brush strokes. So my third stroke were these grasses. And I wrote tawny grasses holding straight, giving in. That giving in quality was meaningful for me. And, and then, you know, just again, touching lightly with a little watercolor as a way to enliven the page. Next one. Very classic. Heaven is the amaryllis. Pretty loose drawing, pretty loose putting in of color. What's really wonderful with watercolor is leaving white space, not having it be all filled in. It, it creates the sense of light hitting it. And you can also see that in the leaves, I didn't worry about getting exactly with the lines, the edge of the lines, and that made it feel moving. So Amaryllis opened full. That was heaven, or that's my sky. Then beaver stick writing text. So that's, someone had given me a stick that a beaver had chewed all the bark off and it was like little writing that the beaver had done with its incisors. It was beautiful. And so that became my earth line and I called it writing text. And I just, you know, if you've ever seen Matisse do um, his fabrics, it's like just so light the way he's putting in the patterns. I got, you know, you don't have to do much. You don't have to go, oh, this is a really complicated thing and I've got to do it really carefully. I'm working off of where I started as working very precise for years. And now I just love the dropping in of color loosely. And then my human. I have this wonderful, right here on my thing, I have this wonderful, oh, my friend Eloise gave it to me. <laughs> I have this little wooden robot that's a pencil sharpener. Totally cool. So he got to be my human. It said pencil eating man ready to serve. So I'm playing. I'm playing around with the world right now and kind of, yeah, finding that, ah, there's somebody ready to support me, you know, my little pencil eating man. And there's text that I can read. and a lot of open space. One, two, three. Okay, next one. Okay, I had to have one human in here. I don't tend to draw people that much, but when you go to Brooklyn, there's so many people there, they, they'll show up in your drawings. So I was sitting in a little park in Brooklyn and I'm sure that the tree was my heaven principle because it just set the tone. I couldn't have done the flags first because they would have had nothing to hang on. So did the tree and then you see that I'm putting in color just with colored pencil. And just the color is just lines. It's not filling in, filling in. That's a dangerous thing to do. See, it's the coloring book mentality, you know? So you just let the pencil lines create a little bit of shadow on one side and out to the, on the roots. Tree stretching, holding. Flags bouncing, dancing. Girl, who was sitting there in the tree, girl making music, wild, unfettered. That's a joyful human presence there. Okay, I think we just have one more. 
It's one I did just the other day in my studio here, looking out the window. Can you bring it up a little bit more, JT? The girl also looks like she's writing on the tree. Yes, she had this kind of baton. She must have been like tapping or something with it. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Great. Whoops. It's not holding. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I just, um, in getting ready to do this over this past week, I just did this one, two, three, again and again each day and kind of reigniting the practice for me and, and helping me just kind of find myself each time. So I started with the tree that's across the road. And I just, the bareness of the branches. And there was a sound element in my drawing. And I wrote, I draw the tree from the bottom up, each pencil stroke a whisper and a lift. So bringing in the oral aspect of what one is doing or what one is hearing. And then I look down on the ground across the way and I saw these plants that were just beaten down. Down below the iris fronds are beaten down, giving in. I think I did giving in somewhere else. I think giving, I did giving in on the grasses. I think often, that's a good one, but I didn't end there this time. Oh yeah, there is one more line, JT, if you can um, bring it up. Ah, it's good. On my desk, the pages spread out, visible, waiting, ready. So this is some writing that I'm doing, actually of memories of Chögyam Trungpa, and just the titles are there, Transparency, Ink, Peony, Vow. And it just felt like that was my human. It maybe wasn't the smallest, but it was, it was, um, it was an offering to the world right there. And again, I put just a little bit of watercolor in to kind of give the tree a little depth and the fronds and put a little text in on the pages. So, I'd love to hear just anything that you're noticing from observing these, what your own experience is with that, or um, yeah, just any comments or questions in seeing this practice. Hi, Barbara. It's Michael hey, here. Michael. Hi. Yeah, I couldn't help myself hearing a musical analogy and thinking of how it might work. Um, without the violin, I just started to vocalize and there it was. I mean, it could be an exercise, but it could go further. You know, just like, da, 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 da. you know, and then it could be a group of notes. It could be groups, but it's, it's an analogy that could be carried. Absolutely. I feel like this can be carried to a piece of music. It could be carried to a conversation. It could be carried to a big project, um, absolutely, and I love that. Sometimes I say that the heaven stroke is like the first note in the symphony, you know, it sort of sets the tone, you know? So I feel like that's what you're innately doing with your music. Any musician is, how do you begin? And what's the middle? And how do you resolve? Yeah, beautiful. You just stretched it out for us. Through the Eroka Symphony opening. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Sarah Henry here. If Hi. You heard. Hi. And I did a workshop with you a number of years ago at Sky Lake. Uh, what I'm looking to do, this is extraordinarily helpful, is to enter into nature in my drawing. I'm just starting back to it to get its energies and presence. And this is extremely helpful in your saying that you can start with the heaven and then earth. And then, you know, it can see where 
a human may or may be a presence or is it a presence in a strokes? Mm -hmm. um, so I have two questions. One is your all those last uh, notebook drawings you showed, were they done as blind contours? They were done, um, no, some of them were, uh, the early ones were mainly blind contour, but then it became something where I was heading out and then checking back and heading out and checking back. I was going back and forth. So that's what you're yes. working to do is to have a really nice exchange back and forth there. Yeah, and that actually answers the second question because it seems to me that this can move then into that place between. And yeah. that place between can give a great freedom that I have not had to date as I'm getting back into yeah. doing these drawings. So anyway, so I thank think you. this is opening up new possibilities. That's great, thank you. Yeah, it's sort of like feeling the nature of what comes first. It has a particular quality. And then the nature of what counterbalances, what starts the conversation on the page. There's the, you know, it's like, it, I feel these sketchbook pages are three people in a room talking to each other. And the first one arrives, and then the second one places itself in a particular way. And then there's this third one that's kind of a surprise or it, it creates some resolution there. So it's a particular journey that can go and so it can have so many different colors to it. Yeah, thank you. Hmm. And it has that, um, how do you choose what to draw? Is it by, um, I just finished that off. Um, I couldn't see the last part of that, Joanna. I'm, oh, I'm really glad you said that. What do you choose, choose what to draw? Yeah. Yes, and I was I was um, asking, uh, do you look for what draws your attention by by the aspects first, heaven, then earth, then human, and you you, you yeah, because there's so much out there. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to choose. Right, and I think and these things, these elements don't have to necessarily even be next to each other. You know, in in the landscape, you're just choosing. And, and, and kind of do, placing them in the room of this page. But I'm really glad you mentioned that because how do you, what do you choose to draw? It's that quality of waiting until something calls to you. You know, sometimes they even go, it's like something saying, draw me, draw me. Or um, something, there's something out there that is, is touching something inside me that wants to, you know, it, the, the world is mirroring us all the time. And so in the experience of drawing, we fall in love with the thing that we're drawing. And so the choosing of it, I'm just sort of riffing on this, is a very mysterious thing. Sometimes I just wait like you don't really know. Sometimes the human is like, oh my God, what is my human here? I don't know, I'm waiting. And then you know. So it, it is developing that, ah, that's it. Mm -hmm. But it's a listening practice. It's like listening to the world and then choosing what is kind of waving there in some way. Yeah, so I'm really glad you mentioned that because it's a it's a deep part of it. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. And I, I just want to add that I, I love uh, how you described um, when you're drawing something and what, what that you're meeting it, that you're, yeah. you're meeting it as if it's a friend or as you're, you're, you're getting to know it. Right, yeah. right. And you know, when I, I think you mentioned that thing about uh, ancient cave drawings and leaving a mark. I mean, ancient people, so this is going way back in our genetic code, ancient people would draw something in order to uh, exchange energy with it. I mean, it yeah. is what's happening with drawing, you know? It's yeah. something that starts humming. And so that blind contour just allows the circuit to just kind of open up. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Yeah. Okay. Barbara? Yes. <laughs> Leslie, I, um, I've worked with you several times through this process, and this is the first time I've, 
I felt the um, the meditation that it was. It's like a meditative process, um, mm -hmm. and in the end, it informs you um, so beautifully. Um, and even the waiting, the waiting is is the part, like you said, it's the part of that process, yeah. and getting into one's own being and taking a risk and non-judging and all that beautifulness that we should give to ourselves, but we are all so often um, so critical and um, set up these boundaries. And I just felt, wow, I can't wait to go outside. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to go sit in my yard, the sun peek through and um, do something drawing. But thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, I wrote that thing. I've been that that pumpkin squash, been afraid to draw it. I mean, I feel that we, <laughs> we walk through fear every time and it is a risk. We're putting something down. We're making a commitment and it takes bravery, even though people go, well, what's the big deal? It's just a drawing. But you are manifesting in some way. So it's uh it does take a certain kind of courage and it's the kind of courage that we're we're all wanting to cultivate right now yeah hi hi barbara hi pat donegan here oh it's so wonderful to reconnect after all these years <laughs> wow. and collaborations i appreciate you so much in your work and your teachings and our collaborations with yeah. Haiku also. Yes. I, I just thought of a few while I'm sitting here. Wonderful. My offer one, um, winter afternoon, noticing the leaf, noticing myself. Mm. Oh. Thank you. Boy, uh, Pat and I have a long, beautiful history and your your haiku the red tulips are alive the red tulips said, now you know everything has been gracing the walls of sky lake for many years and yeah beautiful thank you so much thank you <laughs> oh wow it's really where it all started was that collaboration we were in with Susan and it was just all cooking then, you know, those early Naropa years. Yeah. Yeah. Barbara? Yes. It's Eloise. Hi. I am entering a serious stage in a writing project. And what has landed for me today is the white page and the aliveness that I don't have to fill in everything. Hmm. I like that. Such a help. Yeah. And you it can, opens to movement. Because what that does, at least in a sketchbook page, and I'm wondering how writing might do that too, it lets the viewer fill it complete it. It brings the viewer in. They, they finish it. They, they, it's like what um, puppetry does, you know, that boomeraku. You, you make something alive by your own joining it. So, yeah. And how might that work in the writing process to not spell it completely out, but let the, the reader enter? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Well, I think what I'd like to do right now is um, we Pat, Pat just already gave us a totally beautiful haiku. What I'd like to do is um, finish with the three line practice that started during those Naropa years with Pat and Susan Edwards and those poets and me starting to work in performance and kind of get out of the studio and working more on the spot, Barry Grinelli, all those people. Um, 
So I'm going to take the same principles and create a three line expression. And so this is where sky, earth, heart informs us and holds us. And so it's something concrete, not conceptual, just something that one is seeing or that's out there somewhere. And I will feel my way through it. Um, and, and then I thought we could all do one together. Just have you offer me some lines and I'll pick one and that'll be our group expression. So I'm going to work with the constraint of gray for heaven, black for earth, red for human. And here's where my calligraphic training, all those alphabets of the Middle Ages, the really tight ones, the really broad ones, the very blocky ones, the very loose ones, translate into brush forms and give me many different calligraphic voices. So it's letters as pictures in some way. So first line, I'm going to share your icon. Can you see what I'm doing? No, not yet. Not yet. Could you do a, a, a speaker view, Prim? Uh, yeah, I'm on the speaker view. We don't right? see your thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're good. Now. Good. Okay. So I work, I'm working with gray ink. And I'm looking up at the sky. It's been cloudy for days, but there's something soft. And I let them all touch each other instead of, because the clouds are all connected. Then I wait for an earth image. What, what is the counterbalance to the soft sky? Mountain, perhaps. Hard. <laughs> I'm going to go down a little crunchier here because I'm seeing, well, I'm seeing dried leaves and it's going to give me something, I don't know how I'm going to write dried leaves, but it feels like, you know, what we're looking for is contrast. And in this case, you know, in the sketchbook pages, we had that space to work with. Here, we just have the writing itself. So um, soft sky. Decay. Dried leaves, someone said decaying, um, dried leaves. Yeah, it would be nice to have them doing something. So the dried leaves that I'm seeing are They're gathered. That's what they are. And there's something about Earth that is. But they're kind of going in all directions. So I'm letting the writing gathering. Kind of around. Gathering. I just turned into gathering. <laughs> OK. Dried leaves gathering. Let's get the L a little bit longer here so you can see its leaves. OK. So. What's my human?
Hmm. I stand on the wind. Wow. Feels like that takes us back out to space, but there is something about standing. I like that. I stand. Fragrance. You guys are joining me. I love this. Um, hmm. There's something happening for me because the, the clouds are so connected and the leaves are so gathered that I kind of, ooh, listening. I'm going to do that. Well, thank you, Irene. Because what I was going to say is that I wanted to do something that stretched out across, like would sort of expand at the end there. So let's do, it's like lettering can be very elastic. Yeah. Nice. That's the human there. Do you have time to do one more? I'll let you guys just give me something and mm. what's a heaven image? Something about the space, a bird, oak arms reach, window plants face outside, storm coming. Whoa, storm coming. I wonder if a storm is coming. I think I'm gonna go with storm coming. Tip of pine tree, that's beautiful. Full clouds. We did the clouds last time. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, there was another one right before, honk at the top. Wow, okay, they're all coming in. Um, Let's do storm coming just because uh, we can play with the uh, sort of an active quality of that. Buds at the tip of tree branches. There also was that one of a bird. If a bird was, what would the bird be doing? Well, I mean, flying, bird flying or bird alighting. Um, I'm going back and forth between storm it's very quiet here, but um, imagining a storm coming. Okay, I'm going to go with that. Somewhere where one of you is, a storm is coming. Okay, so if a storm is coming, What's the earth that is going to balance that energy? Trees. Let's see, chickadee. <laughs> I love that, Karen. Chickadee, chickadee's almost like a little tiny one. Holding on, North Vermont snowstorm. Oh, good, a snowstorm is up there. Um, earth arms open. Yeah. What was the first one? Trees shudder. Oh, it was just trees. Trees shudder. I did like the trees. And I'm going to go with trees shudder because the storm's coming and, um, and it's going to let me play around. We don't want to turn letters into pictures too much, but I'm just going to play with it's going to allow my writing to be a little shaky here. Because they're feeling. Oops. Oh, well. Trees. Spelling, you know. The linear mind. Trees. 
shutter. So the two are really there. Trees shuttered, storm coming. What's the human doing in the face of this? Where's my wrap? <laughs> Love that. <laughs> oh, okay. Red boots, waiting, watching, breathe. Ah, these are beautiful. Warmth of indoors. Yeah. Bring in wood. <laughs> wood stove, because we've got the trees shuddering here. Fire needs stoking. Okay, I'm going with fire needs stoking, because I'm doing it in red, and I'm going to just let it be down here, because there's the big outdoors. The human activity. Thank you. <laughs> so I think it's pretty clear, if it isn't by now, that I'm really interested in generating the sense that all of you could go right out and do this. Um, what Leslie was saying of just wanting to go out. You could do it right in your room. You can do it out your window. You can do three words and just write them in three different ways. You can do a brushstroke. So working these principles gives us some, I feel some integrity to the moment and some, yeah, some trust of, ah, that's where I am. I need stoken right now. I need that fire. So we're letting the imagery, the things of the world come to us, work on us. We give back. They give us our life. This is what the practice is here. So, Thank you all for being here. I wish I could see all of you. I think I could just kind of scan and go through a bunch of you. You'll come up on the page on, at the bottom there. But I just want you to know that this kind of exchange is what I need, what we all need. I, um, I wanted JT to uh, put in the chat uh, some links because the whole journaling practice is spelled out in the um, appendix of my True Nature book. And if in, I, I, in the last part of it, I, I said a way to begin and I, I did this whole journaling practice. So, um, so if you don't have that new edition of True Nature, you can order it from the publisher or from um, Amazon. And I also put a link in for, um, where to read about the big brush practice some more. Thank you, Susie. And there was one other thing JT I put in, I can't remember. Um, anyway, it's in the chat if you're interested, just some resources and, oh, and my email. I, if, if you wanna know about workshops, you know, I'm doing online workshops and someday I'm gonna get back to doing face to face, but look at the, you know, all of you coming from all these different places. There's a certain gift there. Um, so my email's there. I'd really like to be in touch. Send me a brush stroke, send me a journal page. Um, if you want me to put you on my workshop list, I will do that. Um, I can't believe we're gonna 
end the Zoom call, but I think what I'd like to do, thanks to all of you for your comments, your poetic expressions, and maybe what we could do is I will ring the gong and we'll bow and just look at each other for a moment. <laughs>